What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Well, we're here with the FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 edition. Now you probably saw the video that we did covering this unit down at the PGA show in Orlando. Um, you know, I really didn't get a chance to dive into it deep, just kind of, you know, did some things with Alex, kind of did some demonstrations, talked about, you know, a few of the new things that are coming for the 2023 FlightScope Mevo Plus, but it was time to get our hands on our own. So why not do a full unboxing, talk about those specific items that come with this updated 2023 unit. What are the differences from the original FlightScope Mevo Plus that we've had in the GSV Studio for so long. And then we'll even do a little setup video just to kind of talk about things about what you should be looking for when you set up your FlightScope Mevo Plus for the first time. I know that we have a lot of channel subscribers uh, and first time viewers uh, alike that are looking, you know, maybe for their first launch monitor and are considering the FlightScope Mevo Plus. So this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the features of this updated 2023 model. So let's go ahead and take Take off our wrap from the unit. We'll just kind of toss that down to the side, have my trusty golf tee there to open up that. And uh, always good packaging with FlightScope. Um, you know, they kind of have this nice little flap that opens up the box. And then I read this message, uh, actually I think it was several years ago, you know, with the original FlightScope Mevo Plus unboxing, but just uh, from Henry Johnson, the founder, FlightScope technology is developed to offer you performance data you can trust in the pursuit of excellence. So uh, the nice thing is, is they actually include this case. So, um, you know, if you're taking your FlightScope Mevo Plus out to the range, you can do that in this included case, which is nice. Um, and it's made out of kind of like a hard shell, which is uh, gonna be durable, you know? I mean, we're outside in the elements, you know, out on the golf range and the, you know, grass and dirt and things like that. So it's nice that it comes with all of that. And then inside, you're going to find several things. First thing, you're going to see this adapter, all right? So this adapter with the USB uh, plug for your FlightScope Mevo Plus, there is a lot of talk about this in the very beginning. Uh, the facts are is, is that they don't want you to use anything outside of the rating for this FlightScope Mevo Plus. Um, now, the most easy, simple solution is if you are plugging in your FlightScope Mevo Plus in a golf simulator, like I do, uh, I leave mine plugged in, you know, when I'm using it. So I don't even have to worry about the battery life, which we'll talk about the extended battery life in this new unit here shortly. Um, but all you have to do is just get a quality, you know, extension cord, something of nice gauge that, you know, isn't cheap, it could have any type of resistance or interference, you know, um, you know, anything quality, um, you just plug it in and just run your extension cord to your plug and you'll be fine. That's how mine is set up and I have no issues whatsoever. Um, there are also alternatives such as a battery pack. Um, you'll see that right on the FlightScope uh, website that you can purchase and that adds a ton of extended time. Uh, people have even gone out and gotten, you know, the portable power supplies that they have now where you can just plug this directly into that and then you're good to go. I mean, hours and hours. Not many people go out to the range for more than three hours now, up to three hours you're getting on this new FlightScope Mevo Plus. That was a highlight of their uh, updated version was the battery life. So people wanted something where they could uh, go out for an extended period of time. Well, now it's up to three hours. And let's pause for a second. And I do wanna make sure you guys know that uh, FlightScope has been generous enough to offer a GSV discount. So if you look down in the description and pin to the top of the comments, you are going to find a link and code that you can use purchasing the FlightScope Mevo Plus, but also the Pro Package add-on and also the face impact location that they're offering. So um, use that code, save yourself some money when you're buying your FlightScope Mevo Plus, or maybe you already are a FlightScope Mevo Plus owner, because the original version completely uh, compatible with both the face impact and the pro package. Pro package we've talked about and discussed, you know, significantly in the channel. If you haven't seen those videos, check them out. Tons of club data parameters, you know, coming from this unit. But you know, the unit itself comes with 20 data parameters. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing what it's capable of, you know, just by itself. But now with all this additional data, I mean, we're talking club path, face angle, um, you know, the face impact is really impressive. Um, but, you know, they just offer so many different features. Make sure you check out all the different videos we've done in the channel um, because it's you couldn't pack it all into even a few videos. I mean, there's just so much to cover. Uh, now let's talk about other differences between this unit here and the original 
FlightScope Mevo Plus. So one thing that's going to stand out, you know, uh, physically from the unit right away is this new kickstand. So this is actually set to open up right to 12 degrees. And that just makes it simple. So they have now, you know, changed the ability of this unit to operate everything at 12 degrees. It is just really, really simple. They even changed some terminology that you're gonna notice, and we'll talk about that just for a second. You're gonna notice that there's no longer short indoor, indoor, and outdoor. Because a lot of people are getting confused because you might be hitting into a net outside. Well, that's really limited flight. And so what they changed it to is just the terminology now says limited flight or full flight. All right, so it doesn't matter if you're inside or outside, if you're only hitting, you know, eight feet or 10 feet into a net, you're going to select limited flight and that's gonna solve, you know, any confusion there. So I thought that was cool, but it's also nice just knowing that you can open this thing right up to 12 degrees and you're good to go. And then you can open up your FlightScope app, connect to it, uh, you know, via Wi-Fi. I recommend using that, you know, iOS app is what I use personally um, to connect to the device. And it's just so simple to set, you know, make sure the tilt, the roll and everything is good. Update your firmware, um, anything along those lines before you might be connecting the unit to a PC and being able to use different golf simulator software. But not only that, all the all new FS Golf app for PC, is now included with this new FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 unit. Now, if you have an existing unit, they do have a license that you can buy. It's a permanent license. It's low cost. I want to say it's $99. Um, you know, I thought that was uh, you know pretty decent. You know, just for them to give you that you know permanent uh, license. But if you're purchasing the unit, that is going to come with the unit. Now, it's not only going to come with that software. It's also going to come with E6 Connect for iOS. But now for 2023, it's also going to include the PC version, all right? And that PC version actually includes uh, 10 simulated courses along with uh, practice facilities, um, you know, all, all kinds of different options. And we'll show that more in the channel. We've shown it quite significantly in the past, but we'll connect our FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 version and kind of take you through all those steps here in the future. So let's just go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna set this off to the side. Now there is one thing I wanna point out to you guys, and I think you'll be able to see it in the video. Notice on top of the unit, it's a little different button now. It's kind of rubber coated, probably so nothing could get in there. The old unit, uh, actually I have the old unit. I should just grab it so you guys can see it. The difference between it, there's no reason not to just come over here and grab our existing unit. Let me grab it really quick. Notice that I have the box and everything. So it's the, the same exact box, same exact case and everything. We'll just set that off to the side. But let's just compare these really quick before we dive into what else is in there. So one, there's that stand. Notice the difference, how it's totally adjustable. This one's opened up all the way right now. And this before would open up, you know, quite significantly more on an angle. Um, so, but look at the difference here. They've actually changed the top to actually have like a rubber coated button. So that's like sealed versus before it was almost like a metal button. And so it's a little different button now. And I don't think we talked about that at all um, at the PGA show. It's nothing significant, nothing that you should, you know, uh, be worried about or that it's a big deal or anything else. But um, it's something that I noticed. And uh, as far as the rest of the unit goes, it's identical. And that's something that I verified with FlightScope themselves that you should know. Um, I said, well, what about any of the internal hardware? I have a lot of people that were asking, well, is there any changes in the inside that improve accuracy or anything along those lines? It is the same hardware. If you have a FlightScope Mevo Plus that you bought before the 2023 version, don't be stressed about, you know, that you're missing out on the 2023, you know, accuracy or anything. So none of that has changed. They've continued to update the firmware on the original version and it's all the same internal components other than the battery, which now has that up to three hour life that we talked about. It comes with a quick start guide. It's also going to come with this product key for E6 Connect standard license for iOS. Um, that's included. And let's see what else is here. They have a setup guide, which is nice. And this wasn't included, I don't think, in the beginning of the original. But it shows how you should have a smooth putting surface off to the side. Um, you can have a putting mat off to the side unless you can roll the ball smoothly from where you're hitting. But it's very key to have that ball rolling smooth. And then I also had some people that were setting up Mevo Plus just recently, and they actually were 
a little confused on the putting. They were using an RCT ball for putting, and you should just use a regular ball for putting still. All right, so um, the unit doesn't want to see you know a metal dot or anything when you're putting. They've talked about that in the past, but it's the same thing with RCT. Just putt with a regular ball. All right, so that's important to understand. Um, it is going to still come with your metal dots. And if you guys haven't watched the recent videos, uh, check those out. We've done a lot of testing with the new Titleist RCT technology. That's where the ball has the metal strip embedded below the casing. All right, and you don't need the metal dot anymore if you're using that. It actually performs a higher level of accuracy for spin, okay? Um, but the metal dots are included if you wanna use that. And then there's just a Mevo Plus quick start guide, which is really nice. And I'm actually gonna uh, do a little video where I show you guys, I'm gonna first plug in my unit, let it charge, and then we'll do a, uh, you know, a quick demo of how I would set up my unit, um, you know, today. I know I did one a long time ago, so why not do it fresh? Now, if you notice here, it says that you should charge this enough for a, a two and a quarter hour session. All right, so um, they just probably a first time charge. They're recommending that you do that. Um, and then you could connect, you know, normal otherwise. And then of course it does have indications. There's LEDs on the front, uh, the original unit plus this one, and it gives you all those indications of what all those mean. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing charged up and we'll give you guys, a, you know, kind of a quick startup guide and how to set up your FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 version. All right, guys, welcome back in the studio. We have our FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 edition all set up. And I'm actually gonna change things up a little bit. I was gonna activate and do everything through the FS Golf app. And instead, I'm gonna show you using FS Golf for PC because I was able to connect the unit to my computer and we can talk about uh, what you need to use for a password. It's actually just M2 dash and the numbers you can do the m in capital two including the dash and the numbers just forget the beginning i think it's fs so just m2 dash and that's how you're going to connect to wi-fi to your unit um, you'll see it pop up just enter that in for a password but i connected to my pc i opened up my fs golf app all right i activated fs golf for pc registered my unit which it then sends out an email and it gives you your codes that you need. I have Face Impact and I also have uh, the Pro Package. I activated all those inside of the FS uh, Golf for PC software. I even did a firmware update, everything, and I'm good to go. So I think it's cool that you can do all that from the FS Golf for PC software now. You don't have to use your phone to go through that whole process. I, I mean, I registered the unit, I did everything, and I'll kind of show you where that's located here in the software. We'll hit a couple shots just to verify everything is all good. And uh, I mean, that was a successful unboxing and, you know, setup and first look at the FlightScope Mevo Plus 2023 edition. So let's go over to our software real quick. And first thing I would like to do is I'll just go into settings and you're gonna need to connect your unit, all right? So connect your unit to your PC using that M dash number password, like I, I mentioned. Um, it was really nice opening up the stand. I only had to adjust it just a little bit to my preferred liking. I like to be right at 12 or 11.9. That's where it's optimal for me in my studio. You can mess with that a little bit. You can see how it can range anywhere from 10.5 to 13.5 is an acceptable range, 12 is the optimal. But if you need to adjust a little bit to work perfectly in your environment, don't be afraid to do that, all right? Um, roll, I like to keep it as level as possible. And now you'll see where I'm talking about as far as sensor mode. It's only limited flight or outdoor. So it tracks ball for a minimum of eight feet, but to a max of 44 yards, all right? So if you're in a limited flight indoor environment, um, you should have it at limited flight. So like, let's say that there's a net out in an indoor environment. It flies like 30 yards and hit a net. Well, you need to be limited flight. Only outdoor, where it's more than 44 yards, should you be selecting that, all right? It's not the environment indoor or outdoor. I just wanna stress that. There was a lot of uh, you know confusion. So I have it set up seven feet to the sensor and I can actually go to set up verification. Uh, and you'll see here, it says there's a wedge. Um, I can just grab a wedge real quick and just chip a ball. And what it will do is, is I have it centered in my T position and I'm just going to chip this dead straight and it's going to track where that took off from. So that was 0.4 left 
of what I have sent the unit centered to, the target alignment. And I can even show you the target alignment. Um, but obviously, very acceptable you know, position for it. I know that I'm good, I'm well within the radius, and I can hit done. All right, so you can see here it says open camera alignment. We'll do that really quick. I had something that someone pointed out in another uh, video that you should really pay attention to, and I'll show you on this other screen. This target alignment window might not be dead center on your projector, all right? So that can actually be moved around. You can see how it's not dead center necessarily, and I'll show you in another screen here. So align it to your mat and your ball. All right, don't necessarily look at the line going through the projector. That's not always the case. All right, so I had a, a few, few different people point that out, and I think that's really smart. Under general, you can go to, I think it's software. This is where you're going to check for any updates, and then you're also going to be able to register your Mevo, activate the FS for P, you know PC uh, for Mevo Plus, um, activate Mevo Plus Pro Package, activate Face Impact. All right, you can do all of that inside of here. So I did it all and, and ready to go. And so what we'll do is we'll just go to a full swing session really quick just to give you guys a quick demo. And you'll see here, this is where it says limited flight. I know I'm good to go because I already selected the seven feet and everything from those settings. The radar setup is good. Now this is where some people are getting confused on target alignment. So notice how the target alignment image is shifted to the right because that you know white bar off to the left, the menu bar. So be aligning it to where the ball is, all right? Don't look ahead to the projector image and see if this line is going through the projector image and the next projector image. You can ignore that. Align it to where the ball is sitting on the mat, all right? And you can see, actually, mine isn't perfectly aligned right now. I thought I had it pretty, done, pretty well done, but you can see my white dot down there. It might just be a little bit off. And so really what you want to do is you want to align the unit, all right? I just moved the unit itself. It's super easy to do. Um, just move that unit just a tiny bit until it's good. And you'll see, see the, my white dot down there? Now I'm perfectly aligned to my white dot. And that's what you should be aligned to, is inside of your actual simulator. So it's really that easy to align. All right, and I can just hit the next and be done. I uh, set up verification, we already did that. Um, but if you need to do it again, you, you can. And you'll notice here, the Lux meter. You need to have proper lux if you're using face impact. I've gone over this. Check out my quick lux video where I talk about lighting and everything. I think it's a short video I did. And then you, of course, can do you know altitude, pressure, all that type of stuff if you need to. Name, club you're hitting. We'll hit a you know eight iron real quick for you guys. And then golf ball, I'm going to use an RCT. And then once that's done, it takes me out to the range. And, you know, I hate that my video kind of covers this for you guys. So I'll just kind of shrink it down a little bit so you can actually see the flight a little better. And we can hit a shot for you. So I have that impact light on, you know, that bright impact light that I have. Um, that way I know that I'm going to get impact because I have plenty of lighting. And it's about ambient too. It's not just about the, the hitting area. I've talked about that. All right, not a good shot to start things off. <laughs> so let's let's take one more shot. All right, that was not a good shot at all. I I actually just hit it really fat. So let's take another shot. There's a good swing. You can see my impact on the club. It's tough to talk for that long and then come up and just make a random swing. But it actually showed you guys what happened there is I hit like pretty significantly behind the ball. I mean, that was like a chunk shot. And so it hit high on the face, which you saw. I mean, it was just a bad shot all around. I think the turf even caught the club. You'll saw, you saw the ball go left. Um, so it was kind of a good demonstration of a miss. And then of course, you know, I hit a really nice shot the second time around after I kind of gathered my composure. Um, but this just shows you, we just went from unboxing. I'm gonna bring my camera back up for you guys. We just went from a full unboxing, we did a firmware update, we did all of the license registration uh, for all face impact and club impact and FS Golf for PC, and then it sends you an email right away. I got my email right away and it even gives you the instructions about how to register your E6 for PC and your courses and everything. It gives you that. So if you're wondering about the PC registration for E6, it's all in the email. It's a really nice detailed email it sends you right when you register your unit. So, you know, charge your unit, 
uh, update the firmware, if it has a firmware update and register it right away, it's going to send that all out. But I mean, we just did all that in about 30 minutes. It was that easy. So uh, this is cool. This is a really good opportunity. I'm glad that I got my hands on the FlightScope Evo Plus 2023 version for a fresh unboxing, talk about different things. Make sure you check out the previous videos, you know, especially like face impact. We talked about lighting, um, you, you know, ambient light's really important. This camera needs light. So you can't just have just a little 300 lumen circle. I had a couple different people talk about how they were using pin spots and that's like the worst thing you can use. There's no ambient light for the camera. So um, check out that video and other videos and we'll make sure to do a lot more coming soon. You know, make sure you guys comment below questions you have, videos you'd like to see with, you know, the Flightscope Mevo Plus 2023 version. And of course, I'll have a lot more coming soon. So stay tuned.